Welcome back to the channel guys in today's video fixing my mistake welding up this hole in the block that was caused by the chain flying off so I hear this happens a lot on a lot of the Suzuki 600s this is a GSX-R 600 since this engine is relatively low miles I want to make sure I do this repair right which involves splitting the case halves to get a better clean better weld and just make sure there's no debris inside the engine so just make sure you pull all the wiring off. Next up, the stator cover has to go. And there is a hidden bolt behind the starter cover that you need to access on these engines. Of course, this is my first time taking apart an engine of this complexity. Uh, although it is pretty straightforward, Suzuki did a great job of making their engines really serviceable. And the engineering on their engines, really, really good. So now the clutch cover has to go and I thought I'd be able to save some time by just not removing the clutch but it turns out you do have to remove the clutch. Man all these gaskets just keep on ripping. Okay guys, so I basically have this bolt right here that is borderline stripped. Um, I just can't get it off. So as a last resort, what I could do is just weld this wrench on and then maybe loosen it. But I'm gonna try a few other ways. And then we can get on to removing the oil pan and then the bottom bolts. Guys, there's probably like a hundred bolts just to split this engine. Okay, so there's a major piece right there. Doesn't look that bad. What I noticed with this engine is that the main caps are actually integrated into the case. So for those of you that don't know what main caps are, it's what holds the crankshaft together. Um, I'm not really a fan of that, but I guess, you know, it makes it faster to remove. It's a uh, safe space. And that's the one theme I noticed of this engine. It's a lot of it has to do with saving space. In order to remove the oil pump, you have to take off the water pump. And in this case, the oil pump actually hides a few crank bolts, uh, main bolts that you have to remove. If any of you do attempt this at home, uh, just remember that rubber o-ring behind the oil pump that's super important and I highly recommend also to look into a service manual so you can do it right. Alright guys it's time to split this engine and it's actually going. So I didn't realize this but you have to pull the clutch out and the shift shaft because the shaft stops it from splitting right here so now we should be able to just completely split this thing apart and yeah this took uh probably like closer to three hours there it goes ah, i don't want it to fall So there's all the chunks that were in the engine. They didn't seem to do any damage and all the crank journals look fine. Now this crankshaft is very uniquely designed. It has uh, variable uh, counterweights, all different sizes, and it even incorporates the final drive gear as a weight, which that must be for space savings, I guess. What do you think, guys? So everything checks out. I guess we can start welding the other case half. Right guys, the engine is apart. Took about four hours to get to this stage. I am gonna take a belt sander and make this hole square and then take this to a pressure washer and just pressure wash the crap out of this area. We'll also have to degrease it and then preheat it. So 
so the piece goes in like that there's a little bit of gap but that is perfectly fine um, so now I'm gonna preheat the crap out of this get all the oils out acetone it and then we'll start welding So I'm using my HTP ACDC Invertig 221 TIG welder, a really awesome machine and it's also reasonably priced so I highly recommend you guys check it out in the link in the description. Also big shout out to Rockmount for supplying me with filler rods. So uh, yeah, weld repair seems to be going pretty smoothly. All right guys, I got the hole patched up. It turned out really good. And just to be safe, I put some of this high heat epoxy around the water pump area and right here where the weld was. Um, just in case, you know. Okay, I'm getting ready to put the two halves together and in reference to the manual, you're only supposed to put gasket um, on the outside um, because as you can see there's uh, oil passages right here and have to remain um, clear basically. I'm going to go ahead and put some gasket on and then we'll assemble the crank halves together. Alright, so now I gotta tighten the crank bolts in a specific order. 